Hey yo guys, how is it going? Tally here, and today we are going to take a look at like my favourite deck right now, like my favourite deck going net for the next couple months maybe. Uh, we'll see what comes out, we'll see what I kind of get into, see how I feel. I think I'm going to be taking this to all the events I go to in terms of regionals and that, just for a laugh. Like, it's not the most competitive deck in the world, but it actually does hold a good chance against a lot of competitive decks. So, this is a build I'm currently running, I may tweak it out a little, but... This is what I love right now, and I think this is the best kind of version of Heroes I can have. It's really flexible. I'm building it to go second, so again, feel free to take this, tweak it how you want, and let's just dive right in. So first of all, for the main deck, we run two Stratos, one ulti, one non-ulti, because the ulti's got really expensive. The second Stratos got put to two, um, because we can only run two, right? You cannot run three Stratos because it's against the rules. Stratos just gets you everything, and it, as well with the back row decks kind of coming back into relevance, Sky Striker's not dead, Salomon Great's not quite dead, Altergeist Guru control Draco not quite dead it's a second effect to be able to destroy spell and trap cards it's just amazing and then the absolute powerhouse engine of the deck we have three vision hero Faris, two vision hero increase and two vision hero Vion so for anyone who doesn't know Faris uh, lets you discard another hero monster to special summon itself when it special summons itself it places increase in your spell and trap zone as a trap then increase can tribute a hero monster on the field which is spell speed 2, you can in fact chain this, right, always remember. Um, lets you summon itself, and if it does so, it, it summons Vion, which dumps you really any hero you want. You know, it's good graveyard setup. It's, uh, you always want to be searching Polly with it as well. It's just somehow become that Polly is a really relevant card to the strategy, and it's a great combo extender, and it's a great game ender. So again, you cannot run anything less than this, right? Because if you brick with this and open it, you need that second copy. Uh, same for Vion, you don't want to open it, you want to be able to summon it off of Increase, and again, if you don't draw either of these, then you can use Faris potential up to two times. So it's a, it's an amazing engine, it just builds such great advantage. It's free link plays, it's free graveyard set up with a discard, it's just amazing. Okay, absolutely mandatory in the deck, no ifs, ands, or buts. Next, we have two Malicious, right, our main target to be dumping off of Vion, really. And again, we run two Malicious because the ban list says we can't run free, because Malicious at free kind of breaks link format. It's just ridiculous. But again, this deck actually does have a secret third malicious when you use Cross Crusader. Summon it from the graveyard, tribute it, search out, banish itself to special summon itself. This deck actually does have free malicious. It's amazing. Okay, then like this deck has a million two ofs because you can search literally everything in the deck. We've got two Solid Soldier and two Shadow Mist. Solid Soldier is really great. If you want, you can cut it down to one just to bring this deck closer to 40 cards. I believe I'm running 41 or 42. I like two Solid Soldier because I just like it in the grind game. You know, if it's sent to the graveyard with a spell effect, so mask change, polymerization, you can summon out a clear monster from your graveyard. I like to summon Shadow Mist, get myself another mask change. As well, there is also the benefit of being able to normal summon it, being able to normal summon another hero monster, and still continue your plays consistently. Okay, Shadow Mist though, like, I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you about Shadow Mist, like if it goes to the graveyard, it searches any hero whatsoever, so it's a great violent target. target. Um, if it's special summoned, right, so again off of Solid Soldier, Hero Lives, it searches you Mask Change, which is one of the most important cards in the deck, because Dark Law is just amazing. So yeah, um, and again, you don't want to, like, open with this and just have completely bricked, so we run to, again, same with Solid Soldier, you kind of want to see it in your open hand, or, um, or you want to be able to search it. But again, two of these, because the deck is so searchable, is absolutely fine. Next, moving on to our one-offs, we have one Dynatag, one Honest Neos, one Plasma, rarity bump since last time I did this, um, and one Draw Hand. Okay, I used to run Celestial, but I just found I was never using it. Like, Draw Hand's just objectively better, because it requires less commitment and actually lets you plus, um, and it's an easy, like, Dark Law fodder like on your opponent's turn so again I'll see how I like cutting Celestial I've got a few kind of locals to go to to really test it out but to be honest I didn't use it a lot I always sent this, uh, this card off of Fusion Destiny Plasma's skill drain on legs right if you can set up a Plasma with an Honest Neos in hand which this deck can do kind of win right Plasma's an amazing card and Dynatag's used more so to have Dystopia alive okay so you can banish it from the graveyard to make one of your Destiny Hero monsters have an extra thousand attack points and then what that does is it makes um, Dystopia be able to destroy something during your opponent's turn or during your turn, okay? So it turns Dystopia into a Dryden. And Honest Neos is just amazing, right? Discard it, make one of your monsters gain a buttload of attack um, and it's just, god, it looks gorgeous. Look at that. But yeah, those are the one-offs. Again, super searchable. You want to dump the Destiny Heroes to the graveyard with Fusion Destiny. Um, 
and you want to have Honest Nielsen hand pretty much whenever you want to go to battle. Okay, because we're going second more often than not, we run free ash to Ghost Ogre. Again, you can increase your Ghost Ogre ratio if you want, there is room for one more. And we also run two impermanence. Okay, so overall we're running seven hand traps. Again, if you want to increase impermanence to free, Ghost Ogre to free, and just totally commit to blind in second um, and running a lot of hand traps, you absolutely can do that if you want. Um, I'm just testing out these ratios right now. I do side the say, uh, the last impermanence a little bit. Um, again, we'll just see how that goes. But so far, so good. Like this has been a really good amount of hand traps because you don't want to open too many. The deck has a combo deck, right? It needs all of its combo pieces. But at the same time, you want to open at least one of these, especially going second. Um, by the way, Ghost Ogre's super underrated, this format, man. Like, this is this is such a good card. Like, it messes with the Guard Dragons, it messes with Saryuya. You know, especially because it's so important to have, like, zones for them. and um, Especially for, like, the Guard Dragon decks. Then, just having that Ghost Ogre to destroy it kind of puts them in their place a wee bit. And then Ash Blossom's Ash Blossom, right? You cannot go wrong with Ash Blossom in the deck. Okay, so that's our monster count. Next, we're going to go on to our spell cards. So, we've got free mass change. Okay, mass change is absolutely mandatory in the deck. Honestly, sometimes I want to run Mask Change too, just because of how good the Masked Heroes are, and because of how good Dark Law is, okay? Uh, so you absolutely can, but uh, Mask Change too is kind of redundant right now, there's better cards to run. So Mask Change, again, you can search it out with Shadow Mist, uh, you can hard draw it. I really wish there was a more consistent way that didn't require as much effort and didn't require as many like resources to search out Mask Change, if there was any one card that just, again, let you really easily summon Shadow Mist, um, because so many cards lock you into heroes anyway, like I think it's okay to maybe give them a link to that just says summon a hero from deck and it wouldn't be super busted. Maybe I'm just totally wrong here though. But mass change to get back on track is absolutely mandatory. Right, it's an amazing card. Um, oh, again, just like one thing that I don't normally go over. If you activate Stratos's effect to search and they try and like effect veil or impermanence it, you can mass change Stratos to dodge that. Okay. So again, this actually helps you dodge targeting as well. And it's recyclable, so you can do it a couple of times. Okay, then we have Free Fusion Destiny, because goddamn, if this is not maybe the best card in the deck, it's a one card link too. It sets up a dystopia, it sets up your graveyard, it sets up draw hand in your graveyard. Like, this is the best starter card in the deck without, and yeah, without a doubt, best starter card in the deck, best extender in the deck, best all-round card in the deck, because it puts a body on board, gets your melee in graveyard, um, so this plus a normal summons a link to with a live dystopia. Um, it honestly truly is disgusting. Okay, and dystopia wins games in time, guys, let me tell you. Then we have a non once per turn search card. This is why we can run two of each elemental hero um, in one honest neo slate like, because the deck is so good at searching itself out. Like, if I open these three cards, I actually open a really nasty combo. Okay, so this is just, this is disgusting. Okay, so free e-call. Um, I really wish I had the secrets, but commons I'll have to do because I'm pretty sure the secrets are expensive again. And of course we are a combo deck, so we don't want to be screwed over by other people's hand traps. So we run free called by the grave, absolute mandatory. Again, called by the grave, even as an offensive tool, you know, unless they've got like a Hornet Jones. Okay, but free called by the grave, absolutely mandatory. Okay, then of course our polymerization that we search out with Vion, a hero lives. Uh, you know what, I, I take it back, this starter card in the deck is just free advantage, right? It's a free Stratos, it's a free Shadow Mist, all for half your life points, which don't matter to begin with. And lastly, Roa, right? Because again, we want to search out the entire deck. Okay, guys, so that is the main deck, right? Now we're going to move on to the deck. For our masked heroes, we run two Dark Law, one Anki, one Dian, and one Blast. Okay, so let's break it down. Dark Law. Every time your opponent's monster goes to the graveyard, or any time any card goes to the graveyard, um, it, it banishes instead. Which, this card wins against Salomon Great, right? So many of their effects say send to the graveyard, or sent to the graveyard, that this means that they just cannot actually activate those effects, okay? Or those effects cannot be triggered, because they will never reach the graveyard, okay? Despite the fact they leave the field, they will never reach the graveyard. And it even turns off some... Hand traps such as Ghost Ogre, because that says send to graveyard, it doesn't say discard. Okay, so again, remember that. And if they try to search anything, you just banish a random card from their hand, which is amazing. Um, Anki is a game winner, right, especially if you're kind of getting any time. It can just attack directly, and if you've got Honest Neos in hand, that's near enough 4,000 damage. 
Um, but if it destroys something, then you get to search another mask change. And then from there, like if you've broken apart the board, you can just mask change Anki into Darklaw and deal more damage, which is always good. Then these two are more so utility, but they even have good effects themselves. So, Dian, uh, you use it to kind of mass change Solid Soldier. So again, to dodge things like Effect Failure and Impermanence, okay? But even at that, um, if this, like, it's nuts, okay? So let's just have a look at its actual effect. Uh, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can special summon one level 4 or lower uh, hero from your deck. So this actually gets you Shadow Mist, which gets you Mass Change, which you can use during the battle phase to really screw your opponent over. And then lastly, we have Mass Hero Blast, which this card is just actually really sick. So again... If you use Stratos and your opponent tries to impermanence it, then you can mass change Stratos into Blast. And Blast actually has a really good effect for when you want to try and break apart your opponent's board, just in case you guys can't see it. Uh, pretty much, you can target one face up more so your opponent controls its attack becomes half its current attack when it's summoned. And once per turn during either player's turn, right, so a quick effect, you can actually pay 500 life points, target one spell or trap card that your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So again, if you're going up against strikers and have tried to set up that multi roll for the end of their turn, just wait till the end phase, right? And when they try to activate it, bounce it back to their hand. What are they going to do? Like, play it again during the end phase? I don't actually think so. So, yeah, like, all really good utility cards that help either stop your opponent breaking a board, a la Darklaw, or these two, or these three, sorry, which just help you push for more and more damage, break your board, and um, again, just set up more big plays, and Anki is a game winner in time, right, see if you've got, like, Anki Dystopia, um, and it's game free, like, you you have actually just got game, right, if you open Fusion Destiny, plus uh, Mass Change, going second, you actually have just won the game. Okay, now for our Vision Heroes, Adoration, an Archetype Underclock Taker, and Trinity, right, the An Archetype One Punch Man. So, Adoration is amazing in the sense that you can target one uh, other hero, plus another card your opponent controls. You can actually decrease the uh, attack and defense of the monster your opponent controls, which again just is crazy when you've got Trinity, right, which can attack with 5,000 damage. Um, this is also really generic that it is just two hero monsters, so it's also one of your better ones to fuse Solid Soldier into to get off those big plays. Okay, but again, both amazing cards. This, when it's summoned, uh, can attack, no, sorry, it gains double the attack, so it's up to 5k, and it can attack up to three times. So if your opponent sets up a board of monsters in attack position, like, you're most likely almost guaranteed to break that board, especially after those new promos come out, and that Dark Ruler no more is going to be nuts for this deck, right? I don't know if it's a main. I'd definitely try maining it for a while. But the Vision Heroes here are really good for setting up your OTK plays. Because this makes them have like pretty much no attack points. And this makes them have no life points. Okay, for our Destiny Heroes we have one Dystopia and one Dangerous. Okay, Dystopia we've kind of talked about a couple times. If its attack points are different from its original attack points during either player's turn, right? So again, quick effect. You can pop a card on your opponent's side of the field. Not a monster, not a trap, not a spell, just a card. Uh, Dangerous is, um, is amazing, right? With Fusion Destiny plus some of our side deck cards. Like, that's just absolutely nuts. Just requires a Destiny Hero plus a Dark Monster. So there's a lot that you can do with a generic Dark Monster. Um, again, it helps for Graveyard Setup. It's not really a card that you want to go into first turn um, on game one, right? But as a card that, again, allows you to actually set up and break opponent's boards going into game two or game three, just setting up your graveyard with any dark monster. You can use it to send Shadow Mist and search out other heroes, like use this with Mali and Shadow Mist, get Stratos, summon Mali, get Cross Crusader, right? Lots of big combo plays. Sometimes you can actually summon this going first. It's just Dystopia nine times out of ten is actually better. Okay. Now we have our Starving Venom Fusion Dragon for our last fusion monster as a super poly target. We do run another super poly target in the uh, side deck. If we had an extra space, I would run it in the main deck. But Starving Venom, right, we're ending on so many dark monsters these days that you just want to kind of get rid of those. Uh, this gains attack points as well, right, never forget that. And if it's destroyed by the opponent, then it blows up all their special summon monsters. Okay, so always remember that. This card's amazing, right, it's not just a super poly target. It is a super poly target that actually does things. Then for our links, we have two Cross Crusader, one Wonder Driver, and one Dread Decimator. I'll say it every time I review this deck or profile it, I thought this card was bad. I was wrong. This card is amazing right best extender it's really good it's a really good example of insane support that locks you into an archetype okay so this is a mandatory 
This allows you to kind of grind out more, recycle your polymerizations, recycle your mass changes. And again, this just sets up a live dystopia. It just makes it easier to make sure you have that interrupt and that pop during your opponent's turn. Okay, and then lastly, I love this card, but we're on Cyframe Lord Lambda, okay? Pretty much just because it's a generic link too, okay? You want to go summon Starving Venom Fusion Dragon using Super Poly, and then when you want to get rid of it, you just go into Lambda, okay? So that is the extra deck, right? Next, we're going to take a look at the side deck, because I think the side deck actually matters for this deck a lot, so I'll see you in a second. Okay, so for the side deck, um, first and most obvious set of cards is free Super Polymerization. This card is insane, right? Just break your opponent's board, they can't actually do anything about it. And our other super poly target is Duplexer Chimera, right? Because uh, someone told me that if you make Violet Chimera against Salamangrates, they will just make their own Violet Chimera because they also play super poly, but they can't actually do that with Duplexer Chimera. Um, and again, this is actually pretty cool in the sense that it has an effect where you can tribute a Cybers monster, so itself, and you can actually stop your opponent from activating spell and trap cards during the battle phase. So if you're ever scared of like a battle trap at all, and a you're up against like Salmon Greats, like use this and then just win. Okay, next we have Free Artifact Lancer because Thunder Dragons are in fact still a thing. Um, it doesn't really impact the Danger, Guard Dragon, Crusadia, Thunder build too much, but pure Thunder Dragons. After, I think it's the UDS may actually make a comeback because it's still a really good deck um, and it's harder to interrupt than the combo -y one. An orchestra are a thing as well, so turn off their turn with that. For our dark targets for Fusion Destiny, we have one Shadow Dragon and one Farfa. Pretty much Farfa will banish something on the field when it's sent to the graveyard, and this will deal with, or sorry, this will deal with a monster. This will deal with a spell and trap card, right? So again, it's dependent on your matchup. Um, we also have our last impermanence, just in case we want to set up a little bit more interrupts, something nail at home that we do not want our opponent to play the game. And then lastly, like I'm still in love with this package for this deck, Free Sanctum to Scythe. Okay, so the Sanctum will summon your Scythe during your opponent's turn, and then your Scythe will stop them from summoning from the extra deck. Okay, again, the deck is made to go second, so having this as an option to go first is pretty sick, right? And some decks it will just completely turn off their turn. Some decks will just scoop to it immediately, so being able to just say no to your opponent when they think they're in control is just good. And as well, like, Sanctum has a, another good effect. Like, if it's popped, then it destroys a card in the field which again is really good. So guys, that is the main extra and side. I don't normally do the side, but I think heroes have a specific side deck they want to use, um, which covers all of their weaknesses, okay, in some way, shape or form. So as always guys, right, if you liked it, give it a like. If you loved it, give it a share. Tell everybody you know about Team Tally today. As always guys, you have been fantastic. I have been Tally. I'll catch you later. Bye.